Welcome to the San Juan Carpentry YouTube channel. My name is Scott Schaefer, and today I'm going to show you how to use the Google SketchUp Pro to design a log bed. The tips you're going to learn can be applied to any log furniture, but a bed is made entirely of logs, so I thought this would be a good place to start. Dealing with round objects in this program is a little bit more difficult than flat, square objects, just like in real life, so I hope this video helps. I'm going to start out by drawing the frame of the bed using the tape measure tool because we have to build the bed from the inside out. I'm drawing five foot posts for the headboard with the center of the top rail four inches from the top of the post. The bottom rail is 24 inches from the floor and the side rails will be four inches and 12 inches from the floor. You can use whatever measurements you want. Keep in mind that all these lines represent the center of your logs so you need to know the diameter of your logs and add them in. On my queen bed here, for example, there needs to be 60 inches of space between the posts, which are 5 inches in diameter. So the distance from the center of each post is going to be 65 inches. That makes sense, right? To mark the location of the spindles, I'm going to find the center of the rail and start there because I have an odd number of spindles. I will then divide the space between the posts by the 6 spaces between the spindles to see how far apart to space each one. I'm going to do the same thing on the side rails except I only have three spindles there, so I'll divide that space by four spaces. Now that the bed frame is mapped out, we'll start by drawing our objects. We're going to start with the spindles on the headboard. I want my spindles to be three inches in diameter, and I'm going to use two inch diameter tenons that are two inches long because the rails are four inches in diameter, and I want the tenons to reach the center. To draw a spindle, start out by drawing a circle with a 1.5 inch radius then use the push-pull tool to create a cylinder that reaches the other rail. Then I'm going to zoom in on one end of the spindle and draw a 1 inch radius circle which will create my tenon. I'm going to use the push-pull tool again to drag the space in the outer circle down 4 inches. Then I'm going to use the object move tool to select and drag the inner circle back up 2 inches. This creates a cone-like taper that looks just like a real life tenon. This will give your model a very detailed look. I'm going to repeat that process at the other end of the spindle. Next, to save time, I'm going to highlight the entire spindle and make it a component. This will lock all the lines and planes together into one object that you can move around much easier. I'm going to name it Headboard Spindle. I need four more of these, so instead of drawing each one, I can simply copy and paste the first one. All of these spindles will remain similar, so if you edit one, they all change identically. Big time saver. When you place each spindle, make sure the center of the spindles are on the nav points you drew with the tape measure. You can select the center of the circle plane by hovering over the edge of the circle until it acknowledges the point. Then move the cursor near the center and it will automatically help you find the center point. Repeat this step on the footboard. You can do this one of two ways. Either draw a new spindle from scratch, make it a component, then copy and paste it, just like we just did. Or you can copy and paste one of the headboard spindles, right click, choose make unique so that it's its own component, right click again and choose edit component, then select one end of the spindle and using the object move tool, you can shorten the spindle to the appropriate size then copy and paste your new spindle component to complete the footboard set. Repeat all of this again on the side rails. I'm using a different diameter log for the side rail spindles, so I have to start from scratch for those. Now we'll draw the rails. The rails are going to be drawn the same way as the spindles, except that I'm using 4 inch diameter logs with 3 inch tenons that are 2.5 inches long. Once I make the rail a component, I can copy and paste it for both the headboard and footboard. I can then make another copy, make it unique, and then stretch it out to use as a side rail. I'll then copy and paste that for all four side rail logs. Oops, there's a problem. Good thing we drew this bed first before building it. 
It seems that my bottom rails for the footboard and side rails hit each other inside the post. No problem. To resolve this, I'm going to move my bottom footboard rail out of the way and mark two inches higher on the post with a new nav point. Before I put it back, I'd have to shrink my spindles by two inches as well. To do that, I'm going to select one of them, right click, select edit component, highlight the bottom tenon and use the object move tool to move that end up two inches, thus making the spindle two inches shorter. I will then put the bottom rail of the footboard back into its new location. Now I can finish the bed by making the posts. I'm not going to make boring posts with a flat top. I want to round my tops to give them a more sleek look, just like in real life. To do this, I need to draw one half of the post as a flat 2D plane. I'm going to start by drawing the footprint circle, which is five inches in diameter. I will then draw the outside line four foot 11 inches high, then a one inch by one inch inward corner. At the point of that corner, I'm going to draw a one inch radius circle. I will then retrace those corner lines to break up the circle, then using the eraser, I will delete three quarters of the circle I don't want, as well as the corner lines. This leaves me with a half inch radius. I will now draw a line from the end of the half inch radius to the center of the log, and lastly, I will draw a line down the center of the log from the top to the bottom, and at the bottom of the post, I will complete the plane by drawing a line from the center of the circle out to my starting point. This will create a closed plane. Now I'm going to use the follow me tool to select that plane, and then when I hover over the circle at the bottom of the footprint, it will make my 2D plane into a 3D object. A little complicated, but very handy technique. Okay, so that's it. To change the color of the model, you can just select the entire thing and use the paint bucket to choose a color, or you can select components individually if you want different colors. Thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe, and I will see y'all in the next video.